Okay guys, this is the Catalase experiment. Um, you could have chosen to dilute your potato extract. Um, I'm using a mixture of Grace and Caitlin's equipment, so they've chosen to dilute the to dilute the um, hydrogen peroxide solution. So it's important to get this stuff right. Your substrate, so this is the thing that is going to be making collisions with active sites, is hydrogen peroxide. And your enzyme is the extract that you made up with your potato. So your enzyme is a stock solution, and in each one we made it with two centimetres of potato and making this up now, five centimetres cubed of... <laughs> five centimetres cubed of water. So this would be a 100% stock solution, which you could then dilute to 80, 60, 40, 20, if you chose to do so. So the principle of the experiment is that we're going to put the enzyme solution, the catalase, which is a ubiquitous enzyme, if you don't know what ubiquitous means, look, look it up in a dictionary, uh, onto a chad, which is the technical term for these little um, discs. The discs are, of course, all the same size. They've just been made with a hole punch, which is why we call them chads. And we're going to soak the chad in the enzyme solution. Oh, I've got a bit of potato on it. Um, so that's where the enzyme is. The idea is that the substrate, is that better? No. No. <laughs> is this better? <laughs> this is better. Um, drop it into the substrate solution, which is the hydrogen peroxide. The disc is then heavier than the hydrogen peroxide and sinks to the bottom. But as the oxygen is released from the reaction, you can see that that popped back up to the surface. And, of course, I've got my handy timer here to time how long that takes. I'm doing three repeats in each tube, so one of the issues with that is, of course, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide gets used up each time you do it. So one of the improvements you could make is actually change the solution between your readings, So because substrate concentration what you're investigating is going to change very slightly each time you do the experiment. It'd be better to have fresh solution each time. Although life's too short to make up this many solutions, so that's why we do it this way. Well, I think that's kind of it. So we've altered substrate concentration in each of these. The hydrogen peroxide is getting more and more dilute. So what we're expecting, that one popped up quite quickly. Can't get those out without the lid off. Um, and we're expecting at the other end them to take a bit longer time. I'll just leave that one going. Oh, and of course it belies that and goes straight away. So the time from the 2.5 molar down to the 0.5 molar should get longer and longer and longer. These two may give you very similar times. And these two should give you very similar times. These should go the fastest. And what's happening there is that the substrate concentration, once it reaches that sort of maximum, the enzyme's working as fast as it possibly can. Can't go any faster. All the active sites are being used all of the time. So the active sites are in use, they're full of substrate. So these two should give a sort of a levelling off on your graph. So your graph should go long time to short time, but it should level off at these two. Um, other issues with the, well done for the person with the phone, um, other issues with this experiment are, well we don't know the concentration of the enzyme. It is a protein, it's quite heavy, it tends to settle to the bottom, you should stir between each reading. If you didn't do that, that's an improvement that you could make. Uh, we could use a powder and make a known concentration of our enzyme solution rather than using a tissue to make it from um, and that might give us yield as more accurate results it might not be evenly distributed if you remember when I put the chad in I said oh there's a bit of potato on this well that will weigh it down and make it heavier that would make your time a lot longer <coughs> um, and of course we haven't buffered any of this, these solutions so um, an improvement again would be to use a pH buffer. With the um, 
temperature, we could do this in a water bath. <coughs> this reaction is actually exothermic. Uh, so these ones that are going much faster, you've got more collisions going on, they're releasing more heat energy. These tubes will be slightly warmer than the ones at the more dilute end, at the 0.5 end, and that could speed up the reaction. So technically, we should do it in a water bath. And we'll do the results another time. Big applause. Big applause. Woo!